Hey everyone, I know it's the week, but I figured I'd bring you three scary chat room stories. And with that said, whether you're sitting by the campfire, on the night shift, or even laying in bed, let my voice soothe your nightmares. Let me set the scene. The year is 1998. Monica Lewinsky has denied that she fucked the president, and the Euro is created. I was of the age of 14, sitting on my parents' desktop PC, using god-awful dial-up internet to research the history of William the Conqueror's harrying of the North. And my friend, who, for the purpose of this story, shall be called Jake, messaged me on IRC. Hey, some dude at school told me something cool that you can do on your PC. Jake messaged. What? I questioned. I opened up start. Two go to run. Three. Enter 2ndrely2.frt. two dot frt. Four. Tell me when you're done. I did what he told me, and what opened up was what looked like a command prompt, but more finished, more aesthetically pleasing. It had two boxes that text could be entered into, and a regular command line. Done, I informed him. In the first box, write your name. In the second, write a password, and in the other, write rtileo.us. I did exactly what I was told, and a box telling me to enter a nickname popped up. I wrote Tom Elton, pressed enter, and the window closed. A few moments later, a batch file opened that said, Welcome, Welcome to the Rtile, Ohio, Ohio, Ohio chat room. Chat room. User, User Tom, Tom Elton, Elton has joined. Has joined. Jake Sex King. Hey! Tom Elton. Hello? I spent the next few months talking to friends on that chat room. I had no idea who created it, or even who hosted it. It seemed to only work in the Artile, Ohio area, meaning I could talk to anyone there, in theory. The only people there were me, Jake, and a couple other people that I was friends with. Someone from the preparatory school across town. And once, somebody who claimed to work for the insurance company's tech support. Who got bored and left after the only response he got was, What school you at? I don't know why we used this instead of a normal chat room. Maybe the secret gathering aspect of it made us more drawn to it. I don't know for sure. I woke up one fall morning, checked the chat room, and found that I was promoted to admin. I had no idea who did it, but I got to brag at my friends for the next few days, and change what people were typing to make them look dumb. But other than that, my powers went unused. Until one day. I logged on to see the anonymous messages to admins was not empty for a change. I wish I didn't check what was there. It was a full story from a user called 09HDI7RF, written in multiple single sentence messages. They described how they were being physically and sexually abused by their parents, how they weren't allowed to go outside the house, and how she snuck onto her dad's computer, saw this chat room open, and decided to tell anybody she could. Well, I assumed that this was one of my friends fucking with me. I responded with, who is this? Also, if this was real, you would have called the cops. Later that day, 
the chat room stopped working. I couldn't get it to work at all. I got an error message when I searched the command on my PC's run feature. I was royally pissed off with the fact that me and my friend's secret hidey hole was dead. Two days later, what do I see in the news? Girl shot dead by her father after breaking out of her home via window. Mother under police custody, but the father is never caught. The family PC contains documents describing kids called Jake, Tom, and others, describing what he imagined their appearance to be, and what he would do to them if he found them, which is too horrific to describe here. That man was never caught. To my knowledge, he's still on the run today, hiding amongst everyone. I am certain that he will never be caught. It's been a long time since I've spent any time in a chat room. I used to find them quite fun, and there was one in particular that I really enjoyed. It was a chat room for people that loved all things horror, and quite often we did talk about horror films or books. But more often, we just talked about anything we liked. There were some really fun people in there. There was a real mix of users. Sometimes, you'd get a new user who would appear once and never be seen again. But there was a core group. I could sign in pretty much any time, day or night, and at least a few of them were about. For me, it was a nice way to wind down at the end of the night out. There were a few of us in the UK, and most users were American with a couple of Canadians thrown in. I guess one of the things I liked most about the chat rooms was being anonymous. Yeah, I know in a way that means people can be jerks if they want. But personally, I'm just a pretty private person. I'm not into social media, and I don't want the world to know what I'm doing. I like to choose what I share. After about six months of hanging out there, I'd gotten to know the people pretty well. There was this one guy who went by the name of Happy Harry that I was always particularly pleased to see online. He was quick as a whip and always made me laugh a lot. I guess in that kind of circumstance, there always will be people you'll get on with better than others. Nothing made that more obvious than the two users, Pink Aries and x -Imox chat room flirting turned into something more serious. Reading between the lines, I guess a lot of Skyping and phone calls went on behind the scenes. Then, one night, we were all in the chat room and they announced they were making it an official thing and were going to meet up. Eximix was going to make the three hour drive to Pink Harry's house and they were going on a date. The regular users in the chat room were either saying how nice it was for them, or typing puking noises. It was all in good humor though, and I think everyone was happy for them, or at least I thought so at the time. A couple of days later, I was signed in and chatting to a girl called Shy Sarah. She had an Etsy shop and I'd order a custom made t-shirt off her. I was mid telling her it had arrived and when another girl called Pokey Pants turned up. Pokey Pants. Hey guys, have you heard about Pink Aries and Exomix? It's been all over the news here. Me. Their date hit the news. That's impressive. Pokey Pants. No seriously, it's horrible. Exomix was found murdered in Pink Aries' house and she's missing. Me. Oh my god, that's, that's terrible. Shy Sarah. God doodles. Which is what she called me for some inexplicable reason. I've just googled it. It sounds like there was a bloodbath in there. Pokey Pants. You don't think Pink Aries did it, do you, SS? Shy Sarah. I can't just imagine it. We talked all the time. 
She bought a t-shirt off me not that long ago. She seemed really nice. Shy Sarah. She seemed so excited to meet him. I can't believe it. At this point, a couple of the other chat room users turned up. By the end of the night, word had gotten around and every one of the regulars had put in an appearance. There was much speculation about what might have happened. Then, a new user signed in. Without saying a word, they sent a link. I clicked on it. People were always sending each other silly photos or YouTube links to music. What I saw made me sick to my stomach. It was a photo of a bedroom. The white bed sheets were covered in blood and lying on it was a man. I had never seen Exomix before, but I knew instantly it was him. He looked almost peaceful, like he could have been sleeping. The vivid red of the sheets and the slash across his neck said otherwise. Written on the wall behind him in blood were the words, Pink Ares is mine. Instantly, the new user disappeared. The chat room went into meltdown. Pokepants called the police. That photo could only mean one thing. The murder was connected to the chat room. Pink Harry's was clearly not her real name, so whoever murdered Exomix knew her through it. It wasn't long before the police arrived. It was a really strange and surreal night with the police signed into our chat room. There was a weird feeling of helplessness. You think you know people when you talk to them as regularly as we all talked. Suddenly, it was so obvious we were all hundreds of miles apart. And we actually knew practically nothing about each other. Some people just signed out because they didn't want to get involved. Others passed on email addresses to the police in order to give their real names and addresses. But we already knew how futile that was. The link to the photo was dead. The photo has been deleted. But fortunately, Pokepants had the presence of mind to save it so she could give it to the police. The chat room was never the same after that night. Some people just never came back, and for the rest of us that did, it was always an undercurrent of distrust. One of us was a murderer. Apparently, the trail went cold. The police had very little to go on. They checked out the room users as best as they could, but we were all over the world, which made for a very difficult investigation. The one thing we couldn't understand was how the murderer had gotten Pink Harry's address. We were friendly in the chat room, not stupid, and didn't go giving our personal details out all over the place. I thought about her often. What had happened to her? Was she dead, or did the monster that killed Exomix still have her? This is the last conversation I had in the chat room. Me. Hey stranger, haven't seen you in a while. Happy Harry. Hi Def. No, I've been busy. Got myself a new pet and it's taking some house training. Happy Harry. Did you realize it's six months today since Exomix was murdered? Me. Really? It feels like yesterday. That was such a horrible night. Me. The police never turned anything up, did they? I still have no idea how he even got her address. Me. The only person that ever had her address was Shy Sarah because of her Etsy shop, and it couldn't have been her. The police said it was definitely a man because of the strength it took to overpower Exomics. Happy Harry. Yeah, I suppose. You're right, Doodles. Me. Doodles. Me. Doodles? Happy Harry. Oops. Happy Harry has gone offline. 
Happy Harry and Shy Sarah was never caught. There is a reason I'm so paranoid online. Anyone can say they are anyone. And I gave my address to a murderer. Paranormal phenomena is certainly a scary thing. People fear that which they cannot explain. However, we often forget how truly terrifying our own kind can be. Human beings have done some of the most vile and horrible things imaginable. This is a story my aunt told me a few weeks ago. I don't know if she was telling the truth, but her emotions showed no lies. The story takes place around the year 1999, when AOL was in its heyday and chat rooms were huge on the internet. AOL was the Google of internet service providers. Yes kids, we had to pay to use the internet as well as the connection. There were cords involved too, it was total bullshit. My aunt had recently divorced, no children, depressed, and needed someone to reach out to. She had a gorgeous face and golden blonde hair. She had a gorgeous face and golden blonde hair that she normally kept tied up. My mother always said she got the looks and I got the brains. She tried dating a co-worker and even going on blind dates set up by my friends. None of these men compared to her ex-husband. Though, I don't see how. The dude was a total douche. Finally, her best friend at the time suggested trying chat rooms. You can probably see exactly where this is going. But internet predators were not in the limelight like they are now. She began surfing from chat room to chat room over the span of a few months. She acquired a small group of male friends she instant messaged. One in particular lived within a few hours of her. His screen name was Muscle Surfer. Muscle Surfer captivated her. She constantly talked about him. By name, but I am not using the name of that sick fuck to my mother. He was two years older than her, had a six-year-old son, and also recently divorced. They exchanged photos and began to chat on the phone. Within a few weeks, she was ready to meet him, and so was he. They met at a local restaurant one evening. She came home with a giant smile on her face, and as giddy as a schoolgirl, my mother had a running bet with my father that he would be some 80 year old pervert. Surprisingly, he was exactly who he said he was, and he even looked exactly like the guy in the picture. They began dating more and more frequently. She met him almost three times a week. He started coming over to her house to watch movies. My aunt was in a romantic bliss, but couldn't be happier. She met his son and adored him, but the kid had some issues. He frequently would talk about his mother's, how one was always cooking, one was always sick and never left her bed, and another that watched TV all the time. Naturally, this would seem strange to anyone. She questioned Muscle Surfer, and he blamed it on his son's wild imagination. She quickly brushed it off and accepted his explanation. Another peculiar thing, he absolutely would not allow her to visit his home. Now, I know what you were thinking. Huge red flag. Run, bitch, run. Did I mention she was in a romantic bliss? I doubt she would care if he didn't believe in toilets for religious reasons and just took his shits on the furniture. She truly felt she was in love. She pressured him to let her come to his home, and each time he would say, It's not ready for you to see yet. I promise it will be very soon. 
The day finally came when he invited her over to dinner with him and his son. As she pulled up to the driveway, she saw Muscle Surfer and his boy standing next to the road. The kid was happily waving at her while Muscle Surfer just smiled. She took a moment to calm her excitement before exiting the car. The child met her at the door and took her by the hand. He looked up at her, elated. I'm so glad you're here. One of my mommies had been cooking for you all day. They're all so excited to meet my new mommy. This stopped her in her tracks as she looked over to Muscle Surfer. He simply smiled and shrugged. Kids say the damnedest things, don't they? She laughed and allowed the boy to drag her inside. She walked to the door and gasped. In the foyer, animal heads hung on every inch of the wall. Deer, wolves, bulls, and even buffalo littered the walls of the entrance hallway. This seemed rather creepy to her, but she thought she could make a fuss and probably get to move to storage. The kid pulled her into a dark hallway and into the kitchen. She immediately stopped and smiled looking down at the kid. Oh, so this is what you meant by mommy. It's a mannequin, and a very good one too. She walked up to it to get a better look. It wore a dress and an apron and was posed in front of the stove holding a frying pan. As she got closer, she noticed the mannequin did not look fake anymore. She saw the pores in the skin, and all too real blonde hair tied in a bun, and even small freckles on the nose. She looked horrified at Muscle Surfer, who was now standing in the doorway of the kitchen, arms folded. She asked him, is this... was this a real person? The kid pulled on her hand. She's my mommy. She wanted to leave us, but daddy and I wouldn't let her. She loves to cook. He began to pull her again towards another hallway. Come on, you can meet the rest. She followed only out of fear of what Muscle Surfer might do if she tried to resist. The hallway opened up to a living room, which included a glowing TV, a large black sofa, and another blonde woman sat frozen with her eyes fixated on the TV. The boy then dragged her to another room, which contained a woman on the bed. She sat upright, back pressed against the headboard, with an empty breakfast tray over her lap. The golden blonde hair tied up into a bun. This mommy is sick, she used to cough a lot, but daddy fixed that. The boy then dragged her towards another door that led to the garage. Muscle Surfer slowly walked behind them with a huge grin on his face. When the door opened, she was hit with an overwhelming smell that made her gag. She looked around in complete shock. There was a tray full of bloody knives, scissors, and scoop-like tools. In the middle of the room stood a large gurney with a blood-stained drain in the floor beneath it. In the corner, many different kinds of bones and even a few human skulls lied scattered across the floor. She began to scream, but was stopped by a large hand across her mouth before she could make the first note. Muscle Surfer stroked her blonde hair as he whispered into her ear. So, now you know my little hobby. You see, we don't like to be alone, and with my skills, we never will. He released her and spun her around. Just to her left on the wall, she saw the garage door opener. She just needed some way to get it. He stared into her eyes and smiled. You're going to make such a good new addition to our house. Just as he was about to finish the sentence, my aunt kicked him square in the balls. 
He began to stumble towards her, and she kicked him again even harder. Muscle Surfer fell to the floor, screaming in agony. She lunged for the garage door opener, smashing it with her fist. The boy grabbed her arm and yelled, Please, please don't go! My aunt pushed him to the floor onto a pile of bloody furs and sprinted for the opening garage door. She had never ran so fast in her entire life, reaching her car within seconds. She got in, started the engine, threw it in gear, and peeled backwards down the driveway. As she sped away, tears streaming down her face, she looked into the rearview mirror to see the boy standing in the road watching her. She went straight to the police station and reported Muscle Surfer. A patrol car was sent to the house. They found no living person there, only the bloody tools in the garage and the stuffed skins of nine different women posed in every room of the house, all with blonde hair. Thank you all so much for watching. It means a lot to me. And also, don't forget to follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and even donate to my Patreon if you are feeling generous. Thank you so much, and have a creepy night.